Mamma mia, io sono cascata innamorata. Ma vado su per la montagna. Albert! Oh. Albert! E che sei rimasto con me? I'm gonna make you a meal that you can refuse. Lascia perdere. In Sicilia femmine sono come a lupar. Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. Recently, Eva has been showing me more Sicilian dishes, and they all have completely blown me away. So today, we're going to take a virtual trip to Sicily, and Eva's going to show me some classic traditional Sicilian food. As you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion in my Syracuse t-shirt. So, Eva, what's first on the menu? Harper, we start from one of the most known Sicilian dish. It's a street food in Sicily. And uh, I need to say that a lot of people think that they know how to make them. But uh, no, it's not so easy. So this is the legit traditional recipe. This is 100% Sicilian. I mean, 100% from Palermo. Okay, well, let's get cooking. Before we dig in, we'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor. As most of you know, guys, I'm not a big fan of highly processed food. Not just because uh, it tastes bad, but because it's not good for your health. One in five Americans are struggling with gut health issues because of their diet. Refined sugars, artificial colorings, hormone-filled foods deteriorate our guts. If you're struggling with mysterious health issues, such as bloating, constipation, low energy, trouble focusing, skin blemishes, then you should check out Thrive. Thrive offers a simple at-home test so that you can know the state of your gut health and how to improve it. They'll analyze your results and provide you with customized recommendations for which foods you should eat more of and which you should avoid. Thrive will also develop a custom probiotic for your gut. 
It's not a one size fits all solution, it's tailor made for you. The test ships right to your door. Simply activate the kit, complete the test and return it. For a long time guys, I had several digestive problems and that caused a big bloating of my belly. But luckily, since I started to take uh, Thrive Probiotics uh, and following their suggestion about what I can eat and what I cannot eat, uh, my bloat just goes away. Thrive has helped us with a seriously aggravating problem and they may be able to help you too. If you want to learn if your gut health could be causing problems, visit the link in the description below for 50% off your own test. Thank you to Thrive for sponsoring today's video. I know what these are. These are the famous arancini, aren't they? Harper, they are the famous arancini if you are in Catania, because if you are in Palermo, they are the arancine. Because in Palermo, they are feminine, in Catania, they are masculine. So it depends where you are in Sicily. I'm sorry, Palermo. <laughs> Don't want to mess with Palermo. <laughs> One of the most famous uh, food, uh, Sicilian food in all the world. And uh, yes, they are the real one. I'm very excited for this, not only because I want to try them, but also because we get about 10 emails a day asking for Ava's arancini recipe. So finally, here it is, guys. Oh, I didn't grab a uh, silverware. These are, per, these are meant to be eaten uh, by hands. Oh, okay. It's a street food in Sicily. When in Palermo. Ah, per, buon appetito. Buon appetito. Okay, I can see why we get 10 emails a day about these. We made, uh, guys, the traditional version with uh, ragu and peas. Now, in Sicily, they do this with bechamel and ham. They start also to create other versions, like for example, like eggplants or a swore fish, but the traditional one with ragu and piselli is always a must. It's interesting because a lot of the sort of components of this remind me of other dishes I've had. For instance, the rice itself has that saffron, so it's kind of like a risotto milanese. Uh, the ragu is similar to other ragus we've had. Uh, the way the rice ball is fried, it's similar to like croquette di riso from Calabria that I've had. But this ragu, I think because the way you seasoned it, you used like uh, ground cloves, it has a kind of exotic taste to it. It doesn't, it doesn't taste like other Italian food I've had. All this exotic flavor that you feel, that you taste, Harper, uh, they are 100% Sicilian because uh, don't forget, guys, that Sicily was conquered by a lot of a population mm. like the Greek uh, and the French uh, and the Spaniard, so it's Arabic, uh, Phoenician, so they are uh, a melting pot of culture and it is reflected also in their food. These influences all together, they create something unbelievable good. <laughs> you can stop. It's like the perfect food. Crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside, ball of fried rice and meat. It's hard to get better than that. I mean, Evan. <laughs> well, Ava, you've got us off to a rather delicious start. I uh, imagine it's time to maybe try a Sicilian pasta. Sicily isn't just pasta to offer. Sicily has something more than pasta.
If I were in Sicily, I was for sure able to pick all my Mediterranean fishes for my fish soup. But guys, I'm in Arizona, so I need to use what I found this morning, which means sea bass filet, uh, red snapper, I'm going to use some uh, calamari. Here we have uh, mussels and clams and some uh, shrimp. we have one of the most uh, traditional uh, Sicilian food and is the couscous. This is couscous? This is couscous, Harper, yes. Okay, I feel, <laughs> I feel a little dumb right now. Maybe it was just me. I had no idea that couscous was just flour and water. Because in your mind what couscous can be. I thought... I thought it was like a grain, like barley or something. No, but couscous is just a salmon in a flour, water, what? and some salt. You could just make couscous? You can make couscous by hand as they make uh, still now in Sicily. Mind equals blown. Now, Harper, this couscous is uh, couscous alla trapanese because it is uh, traditional from Trapani. That's wild. I never would have thought of couscous as being Italian in the slightest, but I guess that makes sense. Once again, with Sicily having all these influences from around the Mediterranean, makes sense they ended up with some couscous traditions. In Trapani, they don't put the fish on the couscous. They serve the couscous the fish and some uh, broth of the fish. The tradition to put the fish on the couscous is from Enna. Enna okay. is uh, another city in Sicily. So here we want to be again politically correct and mix some Trapani and some Enna. So I hope that both our friends from Trapani and Enna can forgive or love us. You need to be politically <laughs> correct in Sicily. It's like yes, yes. Otherwise, we'll end up sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> Sorry. Harper. I couldn't help myself. Uh, it smells so good it smells that. Really good. Uh, let's eat. Let's eat. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. If I didn't know that you had just made a traditional Sicilian recipe, I would think that that is from North Africa or from the Middle East or something. It has that like heavily spiced flavor that you would get in like Moroccan food. It frankly doesn't taste Italian at all. Ah, but it's Italian. I know, it's I know. Well, also I find this interesting because um, Sicily, as far as the historical records show, is the birthplace of dried pasta as we know it. Uh, the first accounts we have from the Middle Ages talk about pasta being produced in Sicily. 
and any earlier than that, it's a kind of a mystery where it came from. Spoiler alert, is not China. Uh, but one theory is that it came from North Africa. And after seeing this, that kind of makes a lot of sense. It's like, if you're making couscous and you add a little bit too much water, which is easy to do, boom, you've got pasta. So, um, Or maybe you don't have so much time to make the couscous, so you <laughs> yeah. add some more water and boom, you have pasta. <laughs> So, Harper, I'm glad you liked it. You discovered this new taste of Italy. I'm mostly just excited that I can make couscous at home. Sorry, Harper. Sorry, let me rephrase. Ava can make couscous at home. Okay, Harper. Now we had the arancini. We had our first and second course because with the fish is both. And uh, it's time now, Harper, for a dessert. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what you're going to make. And um, what I'm going to make, Harper? Come on. What? You're making a Sicilian dessert. Come on. Do I have to spell it out? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Guys, because uh, as you can see, the ricotta is full of water, uh, what I'm going to do is to drain uh, the ricotta. And before I drain the ricotta, I will press my ricotta through this. Uh, so it will be smooth uh, like uh, a custard, more or less. And I suggest, to, I suggest you to drain your ricotta every time that you want to make a cassata or a cannoli or also for a crostata because it's too watery and we don't want it just make as a cake wet. I'm going to use powdered sugar for our ricotta and I'm using this instead of the normal sugar just to keep our ricotta very very smooth. Now that the sugar is in the ricotta I'm going to put the ricotta back here so I will let it drain in the fridge. It will be best if you can do this uh, the day before, so your ricotta will be enough dry. What? What what? What? This is not a canolo. 
No, Harper. This I is, don't know what it is. This is not, not a canolo, canolo, Harper. That was intense. This was uh, a labor of love, Harper, yes. Uh, and in front of you, there is uh, the famous, unforgettable, amazing, delicious, and add all the adjectives that you want, Cassata Siciliana. It looks incredible. In fact, it looks so cool, I'm a little sad to cut into it. I'm not Tarper because <laughs> that is my favorite dessert really? of ever. Si, Arper. More than cannoli? Si. More than s'mores? Si, Arper. Cassata Siciliana. I'm sorry for s'mores, but uh, yes. <laughs> okay, well now I'm very excited if this is your favorite dessert. So this is marzipan, right? See, Arthur, this is marzipan, and I made the marzipan with almond sugar, but uh, for this color green, I had some uh, pistacchio, hmm. because uh, the traditional marzipan for the cassata is green. And I didn't want to use uh, food coloring, but I want to make the original recipe of uh, hundreds of years ago, where they mix uh, almond and pistacchio. Okay, well, I'm sort of sad to say it, but I think it's time to cut into it. I can't wait, Harper. Whoa. Wow, look at that. That is some dessert right there. I'm excited. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah, I can see why that's your favorite dessert. It's something that if you love, if you like the sweet flavor, it's, it's a must. Well, I love sweet ricotta desserts. It's one of the things that you introduced into my life that I can't believe I lived all these years without. I never ate ricotta before I met you. One of the first dishes you ever made for me was a crostata, which is sort of like the simplified, dumbed down version of this. This is like, has all the things I love about a ricotta crostata, but taken to a whole new level. Oh man, there's like orange and almond. And chocolate and sugar. The marzipan's good. I remember the one time I went to Sicily with you, it was very brief. We basically just like crossed the Strait of Messina and then went back. So we didn't spend a lot of time there, but we were looking for cannoli and we went into a sweet shop and I remember seeing so much marzipan. They had all these crazy colorful, they would, um, they had them shaped like different random fruits and vegetable. You find an apple and a pear and a mushroom and they were all like hand painted. So you go in and it's just like a Willy's, Willy Wonka's land of chocolate. Ma it, this is dangerous to have around. This is by the end of this evening is gone. <laughs> Probably. It's gone. So Harper, what do you think about the Sicilian food while I'm eating a citrus? It's really amazing. It's unique. It's diverse, it's colorful. It's really fascinating, this place that has just had so many influxes of different, you know, culinary influences and flavors and cultures. It clearly produced something pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. There was Harper, an Asian Greek historian, because Sicily was part of Magna Grecia. Mm -hmm. And looking at the temple of Agrigento, this Asian Greek historian said that the Sicilian people built as they never are going to die, but they eat as they are going to die tomorrow. And this says everything about 
Sicilian. <laughs> if I knew I was gonna die tomorrow, I'd eat some more of this, that's for sure. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you want us to do another one on a different region in Italy, leave a comment down below, let us know which region we should do next. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar, and we will see you next time. Ciao! Ciao.